Hey guys, it's another day at Pro Edge Paintball. Thank you for watching uh, our episode here. We get a lot of questions. People ask us, what's the difference between CO2 and nitrogen or NOS? You know, um, for you guys that have played, hopefully you know the difference. If not, um, we're going to basically briefly go over it so you guys have a better understanding. I'm not going to get into all the, you know, the chemical differences and whatnot, but just so everybody has a general idea. Your CO2 bottle is your cheaper, your less expensive of the two options for paintball. It's a liquid that turns into a gas. It has a push pin valve. What that means is when you press it, the air comes out. No regulation, nothing controls how much flow comes in and out of the, you know, basically out of the bottle. Um, pretty simple, straightforward. This is the one that you see uh, looks like white powder coming out of the end of your paintball gun or if you've rented guns before and it's cold outside. Uh, what that is is some of the liquid from the inside of the bottle coming out, um, like basically down the barrel. Uh, like I said, that's the most popular because it's the most inexpensive. A lot of your academies, um, some of your other sporting goods companies, they'll fill them out for you. So it makes it real easy for you guys that are playing like on your own property uh, to get them filled up. You've got you know a ton of places you can get you know get them filled up and purchase them from. Your compressed air is what this is called here. Um, Back in the day, I guess they used to fill it with nitrogen. I don't know if any fields nowadays actually still fill it with actual nitrogen, uh, but you'll hear it called nitrogen, NOS, um, uh, HPA, which stands for high pressure air, and then compressed air. Um, basically, all this is is compressed air or high pressure air. A big giant compressor grabs the air, compresses it, uh, gets the liquid or the you know the humidity out of it, and puts it into a into a smaller bottle here. Um, no liquid inside. So for a lot of your electronic guns, this is what's required because, of course, liquid into an electronic gun is going to damage it. This is also easier to fill than your CO2 bottle. This has a fill nipple on the side. So at a lot of your local fields, you can fill it yourself or it's you know a much faster line. They just plug a little quick disconnect is what it's called onto here and they fill it up. Where your CO2 is actually filled up from the top, meaning you actually have to unscrew this from your gun. Go take it up to the get it filled up and then put it back on your gun. Compressed air, you can leave it set on your paintball gun, fill it up from the side and continue your playing. Not a problem. Some of your places also let you fill it up yourself once you've gone a while. So it makes it really easy, makes the line go by much faster. Your CO2, you can't really tell how much is inside of it without knowing the weight of your bottle empty and full. Because it's a liquid, it's based on volume so you can actually feel the difference. Where the weight in this doesn't change too much. Um, I mean, it's very, very little because it's strictly just air pushed into here. Luckily, on the compressed air bottle or HPA bottle, it actually has a gauge that tells you how much pressure is left. So as you're getting low, you know where your gun is going to stop shooting as hard or as fast as it normally does because you're low on air. So for a lot of you guys shooting like the Spider Phoenix, the Spider Pilot, uh, the Azoden Blitz, um, Invert Minis, Empire Axes, all those guns, are very popular, but they we pretty much recommend on the Phoenix and the Blitz. Pretty much don't even choose to shoot CO2. You'll have a ton of more issues with it. You want to go with the compressed air 99% of the time on something like that. Um, once you reach over about the $200 range on most paintball guns, you'll have to go with compressed air HPA. If you're just getting started into it and it's in your budget, skip the whole CO2 phase. If you're going to play at a local field all the time that fills compressed air, uh, you know. Go directly with compressed air, skip the CO2, don't waste your $30 or $25 you're going to spend on this and then throw in the trash or give it away to somebody or sell in the garage sale in a couple months. And go ahead and go with the compressed air. If you're unsure if your field does compressed air, call them. Hey guys, do you feel compressed air? They should tell you immediately or check out their website. Uh, a lot of fields will have that on there. As far as picking the size of your CO2 bottle uh, or your compressed air bottle, uh, mainly most of your fields, what they'll do, at least once here in Houston, Texas, you'll go play once on the left side, once on the right side of the playing field, and then you'll come back in. So as long as you can get two full games out of the air tank you're buying, you don't have to go with a ginormous uh, compressed air bottle. If you're shooting on your own property uh, in the backyard, you guys have a ranch or whatnot, you may want to go with a larger compressed air bottle. And of course, they make a ton of different sizes on compressed air. Uh, you, this is pretty much one of your smallest sizes. They make a smaller size that um, probably a couple smaller sizes for your pump players, which don't shoot that much, that many paintballs. Um, but this is your 35 cubic inch, 3,000 psi. 35 cubic inches is like saying a 20 ounce Coke bottle, um, and then it holds 3,000 psi, which is how much pressure you can cram inside of it. 
Uh, they have larger ones that are like 48 cubic inches and then 68 cubic inches. So 35 cubic, in cubic inches like your 20 ounce Coke bottle where your 68 cubic inches like your 2 liter Coke bottle. Of course it's going to hold a lot more. You put pretty much the same exact thing inside of it, just one can hold more than the other one. CO2 is based on how many ounces of liquid you can put inside of it. They have like a 3 ounce, a 9 ounce, a 12 ounce, 20 ounce and a 24 ounce. They may even make a 30 ounce, I haven't seen those, um, but I've heard about them. You're, you guys buying a lot of these entry level packages, stay away from the ones that have a 9 ounce. You get probably three to 400 shots out of that. Uh, it's honestly kind of a waste. All the customers, a lot of the customers that come in here, they go, Can't, why didn't I get a bigger one? Well, it's probably in the package that you bought because it's the cheapest route you can go. So it's great to get guys started, um, but as you play, you realize you're gonna need more air than that. Uh, yeah, you can fill up a million times during the day. Usually it's free at your local field. They usually do what's called all day air. Um, but 12 ounces and 20 ounces are probably the most popular across the board. So check those out. If you're going to go with the compressed air, um, talk to your local you know, store. Um, there are bottles that run anywhere from $50 up to $165. Uh, you know, it's really a personal preference. Make sure you try on the bottle on your paintball gun. Um, if you didn't bring it, see if they'll let you try it on. Um, at our store in Houston, Texas, we'll let you try on all the sizes. Uh, recommend one way or another, not because we're just trying to sell you a nicer bottle, but realistically what's going to be easiest and best for you. So thank you guys. Uh, any questions or you guys feel free to stop by our shop in Houston. Uh, for, more, for more information on that, it's ProAgePaintball.com or give us a call, 713-896-8841. Thanks a lot, guys.